All right, welcome aboard everyone. I hope you're all having an amazing Monday so far and a great start to the new week. Now, given that we are just a couple of weeks out from the official release of Indy 5, The Dial of Destiny on June 30th, a lot of fans are very curious to see what the fan reception is going to be like, the box office for results in comparison to the projections and Overall, really, what really is going on with Kathleen Kennedy right now for both Indy and Star Wars? Specifically, of course, we have a lot to talk about when it comes to a specific Lucasfilm project that is falling into financial issues, so we're going to be diving into every specific detail about all of that. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. And without further ado, let's get right into exactly what's going on here. Now, we know that Lucasfilm for a very long time now has been an up and down roller coaster, right? It's really been an emotional ride, so to speak. We've had a lot of hits and a lot of misses when it comes to Disney Star Wars. I felt like Mando Season 1 and 2 are great. Rogue One was a fantastic piece. The Force Awakens was a start to what could have been something fantastic as well, but it really didn't end up being what it was meant to be. And so here we are, you know, we're in the age of Star Wars TV shows on Disney+, Plus, many of which did not really meet with the fans' expectations. We're talking about Boba Fett, Kenobi, and even Mando Season 3. That's three right off the bat. But the latest has a lot to do with a lot of financial trouble involving Disney and Lucasfilm for a specific Star Wars show. Let's dive into this. Now, with both Kathleen Kennedy and Leslie Headland struggling with the Acolyte and Skeleton crew, one major development arriving for one big Lucasfilm project is quite concerning for Disney already as far as financing goes. Now, the incoming financial disaster is said to be dedicated to the Acolyte series by Leslie Headland so far, as they have gone way over budget than expected for the series, well before realizing Leslie Headland's terrible direction for the show and how it dismantles George Lucas' Star Wars. As a big effort to save further losses, Disney's concrete plan right now with the Acolyte is to cut back on the marketing of the Acolyte by 80% very similar to what they did with Indy 5 and its marketing after going over budget for an overpromised project that is already driving fans away. Now, funding for the Acolyte is prepared to go down to a bare minimum, and both Kathy and Leslie are already panicking about their legacy with Star Wars. Bob Iger, the Disney CEO, was already anticipating subscriber loss on the Disney Plus platform because of the Acolyte as a show, as they have begun to realize Leslie Headland's drastic shift in tone of the Star Wars franchise to send a series of messages in this show and radical beliefs to the general audience. Now, let me pause here quick, because there's more to the story than this. Now, what's really concerning about this, the fact that they went well over budget for the Acolyte series than expected, and how Disney is beginning to realize now that Leslie Headland is quite a radical lunatic, to put it bluntly, honestly, guys, I have to really put it out there. She really just does not believe in Star Wars. This is someone that says that Luke deserved to die in The Last Jedi, that Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi is better than The Empire Strikes Back. This is also somebody that fake cries on stage. Somebody also that says Star Wars saved her life, but never really tells us why it saved her life. Everything is almost like an image booster for herself to kind of kickstart her career, and she's using Star Wars for that. And it's very sad, but it's true. If you dial back a couple of years ago, we had a interview, of course, where she was talking about um, Russian Doll, and then she was questioned about Star Wars, but well before she was even in the talks about this, by the way, and she really couldn't name a single Star Wars movie at all. I mean, she really knew nothing about Star Wars, and then suddenly when she's attached to the Acolyte, she's magically a lifelong fan that knows the expanded universe through and through, yet at the same exact time, makes a High Republic show nothing to do with the expanded universe. Can you see how, you know, contradictory that really is? So moving to the next big thing here, all right, is this. This is where things begin to unravel. Now, on top of that, the projected loss in subscribers is said to be so great that Disney has even considered making the Acolyte a non-canon show, much like Star Wars Visions, to tame the backlash from the fandom once this arrives next year. 
Now the series is also slated for expensive race shoots by this fall to fix some of the faults, which is only going to cause further cutbacks in marketing and advertising for the Acolyte next year. Both Kathy and Leslie are already rushing into post-production to edit some of the show ahead of time to get this released at an earlier date between the financial cutbacks and rushed production. It's not looking good for the Acolyte series as Leslie Headland's entrance grows very thin. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this, but Leslie Headland has stated this various times before in the past that she believes that Star Wars fans are not to be paid attention to because that interferes with your writing. She feels that the fans have to be excluded, that George Lucas has to be excluded, and that George Lucas is not Star Wars, that he has nothing to do with the philosophy, and that he is not needed to succeed in what Star Wars truly stands for. All right? I mean, she even really went as far to say, and we've talked about this before, that she believes that the misogyny is how, basically, if you look up to Lucas, primarily and how he's the key to star wars then you're a misogynist that's what she says she said that way back in 2019 she said it again in 2020 and she kind of alluded to it without really saying it directly back in 2021 as well so there's a lot of great things coming out of john and dave's work with the ahsoka series amanda 4 but aside from that you know from what has been shown to us the acolyte is not really looking good uh, Leslie Headland, and I repeat Leslie herself, stated that Acolyte is a mixture of The Matrix meets Frozen meets Kill Bill, and it's even going to have a little sliver of Mission Impossible 2 in there. We've talked about that leak about how the ending rips off the gotcha moment in MI2. You guys know what I'm talking about, the whole uh, mask grip scene. So it just goes to show you that she's very much like Ryan Johnson. She takes other franchises' work throws them into Star Wars, and labels it as her own creation. And so it's basically like a copy and paste scenario. She takes scenes from movies that are very popular and throws them into Star Wars. Ryan Johnson did the same exact thing with The Last Jedi's ending compared to Escape from Los Angeles. Go ahead and check it out. I've put this up many times before. But what's even all the more concerning is that, is this going to break the momentum for any chance that John and Dave have to turn Star Wars around for the better. That's the biggest skeptic for me, at least, piece of skepticism that I have, is will the Acolyte and not only its financial troubles and its creative issues upon the fans, is that going to break the momentum for the fan base that are not fully informed about who was running what? who's creating what or who's writing this and directing this there's a lot of fans out there that don't really know much about that so i would really love for you guys to spread the word on what john and dave are working on and what kathleen kennedy and leslie headland are working on and what they're all about it's very important for fans to know about that so Anyways, guys, I'm really intrigued to hear what you all have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys next time. Yeah, no.